uh, again, more into design education. Can you work with property owners to, to help them understand you know, what it means to invest, what, uh, what they might do to improve their, biz their building, what might help uh, make greater returns? Um, you know, here's an example that's uh, in Mansfield where they took off the slip cover and had a beautiful building underneath. And um, yeah, I don't recall, but I don't think it, it ended up being um, you know, it, as expensive as you might think just because it was a slip cover and, and most everything underneath was intact. Uh, and, you know, with a comprehensive design strategy, with um, assisting with property owners, with creating some of those incentives, with uh, educating people on the importance of, of uh, the good design and, and the historic district and the importance, you can end up with something like Nelsonville, where you have a, a beautiful downtown and, and well-restored buildings in a district that's very attractive and, um, you know, looks as good as, as probably the day that uh, some of these buildings were, were first constructed. And finally, the uh, Promotions Committee. Uh, promotions Committee is charged with image promotion, retail promotion, heritage tourism, and special events. And what that means is um, uh, promotion, primary responsible for marketing a unified quality of the district. So, um, you know, how are you selling yourself? How are you selling the district? Um, and I think a big thing that we uh, overlook in downtown is what's your internal image and what's your external image. If you don't dictate what you want people to think of when they think of your community, they're going to decide that themselves. And more often than not, it's not going to be nearly as flattering as you would like. So it really is up to a, a downtown revitalization organization to decide you know, what's the image and how are we going to carry that image out? How are we going to sell it? Um, so what are the strengths? Who are you targeting? Uh, opportunities for growth and positive changes downtown um, all really go into uh, creating that image and being effective in promotions. Uh, different uh, pieces of, of the image, um, a logo is a big one. Here's some examples of, of uh, good logos from around the state. Websites, uh, another very big piece. Uh, you know, websites like a, a building facade uh, for those that can't get to your community. Uh, for anybody that goes to your website, you know that's the first impression that oftentimes that they'll have a community, and you want to make sure that that um, says what you want about your community. That uh, it presents the image that you want people to have. Um, again, when somebody thinks of the name of your community, when they think of it. Uh, you know, do they think what you'd like them to, or are they thinking something that, that's terrible and you'd rather they didn't? Uh, and that's really up to an organization to steer uh, to dictate what that's going to be. Uh, image promotion tools include business directories, shopping guides, restaurant guides, parking maps, all different pieces that can go into that uh, toolbox. Uh, E-blasts are a really common one. Uh, you know, what are all the good things that are happening downtown? Promoting uh, downtown in the ways that you want and use that toolbox to, to sell it how you would like it, uh, uh, the way you want people to view it. Um, good example of, of two different strategies for um, uh, selling the downtown. The uh, first was, was pretty funky, and uh, but it got pretty mixed feedback, so the second probably was a little more true to what people considered uh, Medina to be. Retail activities. Uh, this is a really, really big piece of, of um, uh, I think what uh, a promotions committee should do is that uh, you, know, you, you want to sell the district, but you also really want to work that you're helping the businesses succeed. Um, successful businesses drive more uh, tourism than, than any amount of advertising that you could do. Um, anybody that's ever you know, gone to their favorite destination, usually you go there to go to the good businesses. Uh, you know, Charleston's a, a beautiful city, but if they didn't have great restaurants and shops, I, I don't know how many people would go there. And same for any of, of our communities. So. Um, you're coming up with events that really bring people into the stores and ring registers. Uh, here's a, a good example from uh, Defiance uh, during the Lilac Festival. Um, so, uh, you know, offer the opportunity to showcase the goods and services available in your Main Street district. Here's other great promotions, uh, strategies for, for getting people in the stores. Um, in Medina, they're big on the Thursday night shopping, and here's all the reasons why that they, uh, you know, here's what they use to get people out. Uh, this was a really great one they did up in Cleveland, Restore Cleveland, <laughs> just showing the types of things that you could get in small locally owned stores that you might not be able to get into big box. Um, 
So retail activities, a great way to look at this is, is line them up a year uh, in advance and make sure that you hit all those different opportunities that uh, really works well for the retailers that you, um, as things come up like back to school or Mother's Day or Valentine's Day, that you really have events uh, that can help boost those sales as best you can. And looking at, uh, here's some nice white people really loving Medina. Uh, um, again, trying to promote this Thursday night sales. Um, I think one of the next... Uh, Oh, well, I think it's coming up. Uh, special events. Uh, special events are, are pretty key um, to the success of a downtown, but I think sometimes they're relied on a little too heavily. Um, they're great. They do bring people back downtown. They habituate people to, to coming downtown. They show off what the, what people ha or what a district has, but um, they're really time intensive and, and costly. And too many communities, I think, just uh, you know, put all their eggs in this basket that, hey, we're going to have a lot of events and it's going to turn into this great district. And, and that just doesn't happen. Um, you know, I, I think that oftentimes that there's a disconnect and, and uh, the organization thinks that every retailer benefits from having events and it's not true. Uh, retailers don't tend to love events. Uh, oftentimes it, it takes up their parking. Regular customers don't come in. They end up just, uh, you know, being a place for people to use bathrooms. And so uh, relying too heavily on special events can, can be a bit problematic. And another thing, if, if all you ever do is special events, your committee starts to get known as the party planning committee and no one takes you serious. So. Um, you know, there's a strategy for doing special events, and they're great to have, but it can't be the, the um, end-all, be-all of, of the organization. Um, but it does have its benefits, introducing new groups, um, creating some ex excitement. Uh, and then, oh, every special event should include these uh, five things. So something free, uh, events overlapping, activities for children, music and food. Um, if you have those, you'll, you'll be a success. Uh, merchants really do need to be a part of these special events. Um, you know, that you want to make them successful as possible and, and that they can take advantage of all the people you're bringing into the district. Um, heritage tourism. Uh, you know, heritage tour, it's the idea that, that people are traveling uh, to experience something authentic, that uh, it's, it's not just shopping, it's really about going to places that matter. Um, and this uh, segment of tourism it is growing the fastest. Uh, you know, these people tend to stay longer, they shop more, and they're um, you know, more likely to uh, travel in tours and, and uh, do packages. So it's a great group to attract, and if your district is you know, authentic and attractive and has good shops, you're, you're likely to attract this group. And, and no better economic development than inviting people to your community to spend money and, and telling them to leave uh, so you don't have to you know, pay to send their kids to school and pick up their trash on Tuesday morning. Um, factors for growth and of heritage tourism. Uh, so more weekend traveler. Uh, why? They're, uh, they tend to be baby boomers. They're very tech savvy. Um, and they want to know more about history and have these uh, sort of edifying experiences. So, again, a great group to attract. A good thing a promotions committee should work on. Uh, so that kind of sums up uh, how the Main Street program works. It's a, a ton of information, and, and uh, I know it doesn't cover it all, but uh, you know that's sort of um, what we try to do to squeeze this in is to, to give a rough outline of how it works. Um, we have not completed the statistics for 2010 yet, but in uh, 2009, when we had uh, 37 Main Street programs, there was 90,000 volunteer hours donated. Um, the total investment was $128 million. So for every dollar invested in the Main Street program, there was a th almost a $37 return, which is pretty incredible. Um, and when you consider there was uh, 434 full-time jobs and part-time, uh, 484 part-time jobs added in one of the worst economic uh, years of in decades. It's pretty impressive what Main Street's been able to do. Um, so finally, uh, becoming a Main Street community, um, you know, we've got a few steps if a community is interested. Uh, first, there should really be a, a public-private uh, entity, a nonprofit organization uh, that's actually in place to willing to do the work. Um, we have an emerging level membership that's $2,500 a year. Uh, they receive all the benefits of the Main Street program, training discounts, on-site visits, strategic planning visits, unlimited telephone and email consultation. Um, and we require a community to at least be in at that level for one year before they can apply to become a certified Main Street program, uh, but more, no more than three years. And then finally, when a community does apply to become a Main Street program, uh, Heritage Ohio will, will put together a, um, you know, a um, a selection panel or a selection team and, and go to a community and do an on-site interview with, with the board of directors and the community leaders to determine whether a community is really ready to, to come into the Main Street program. 
Um, so that is the end of the presentation. Uh, I think at this point, um, I think we're open for uh, questions. So um, I think Devin's going to help me on how this works, but feel free to type in a question and I'll try to answer anything I see. Okay, can I describe any examples of earned income? Uh, yes, some good examples are uh, fundraising events um, that, you know, silent auctions or um, a beer tent or, um, yeah, anything that the organization can do to, uh, to do some sales. Again, in PICWA, they, uh, they do lots of sales. They sell um, Christmas ornaments every year. They sell calendars. Uh, I think they've done cookbooks. Um, what do a uh, chocolate walk is is one that's uh, been a really successful event in a lot of communities. It um, retailers uh, all have something different chocolate in their store. Uh, people buy tickets to to go through those stores, um, so it really it brings registers and Main Street or the yeah the revitalization organizations make money on selling these tickets. Um, I've got a fundraiser survey I, I put out to all the Main Street communities and received answers. Uh, from 25 communities ranging from $2,500 net for an event up to 60000 net for an event. Uh, Worcester and Sandusky uh, both do events that, that bring in over $50,000 a year to their program. Was that it for? Yes, the one question there. Um, any other questions? Please uh, type those in now. Okay, I don't see any coming up. Oh, here's something. Can an existing CIC Board of Trustees serve as a Main Street Board? Um, there, let's see, there are a number of different ways um, that Main Street programs, I think, are shaped. Uh, sometimes they're born out of a Chamber of Commerce. Um, sometimes they're, they're uh, kind of a, a regeneration of a, of a failed merchants organization. Um, so there's not necessarily any wrong way to go about it. Um, I think as long as that CIC board included, you know, that it was a public-private entity, um, that it, it, you know, some bylaws included things that could uh, accomplish uh, what a downtown revitalization organization means to accomplish, then I don't necessarily see an issue. Um, and we've seen where um, some organizations are, are combined um, in, in varied effectiveness, um, you know, chambers and Main Street programs, it, it's, it's got its uh, issues. Um, more often than not, what I think we've seen is most successful is that when it's a separate board of directors, but um, the organizations are, are housed together and there's um, uh, good communication. So, uh, you know, if, if in one building you've got the chamber, the CVB, the CIC, um, kind of all using the same location, same administrative person, same uh, copy machines and so on, um, that seems to be kind of the most successful strategy. Uh, what role have you seen colleges play? Um, there are some communities where colleges have been a really big player in the revitalization efforts. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm always surprised when, when the university isn't more involved, um, just because if they're recruiting students, a healthy downtown uh, makes all the difference in the world. So um, I think more... Um, now than ever, we're seeing more of the college presidents um, and board of trustees uh, understanding the importance of a healthy downtown and really getting involved. Um, so the uh, Oberlin's a, a community where the university has been pretty instrumental. Uh, Kent is a great example. Uh, if you anybody want to get in touch with Mary Gilbert and Kent, where uh, in the beginning of the Main Street program there, Kent, the university in, in downtown, um, you know, did not work together whatsoever, and now that they work hand in hand, uh, it's it's been incredibly successful. So a university really does need to be involved. They've got incredible resources, and, and um, uh, another good example is in uh, Painesville, uh, where the Main Street manager Doug there has had marketing students pair off with uh, downtown business owners, and really is helping them uh, update their um, update their their uh, brand or their uh, marketing materials. Uh, so it gives the students a real world project, and it's also uh, helped all the business owners. Can you share info from the surveys? Yeah, anybody that wants to email me, um, uh, you can, there's our website on that last slide, uh, heritageohio.org. My email's on there. Or it's jsigler, S-I-E-G-L-E-R, at heritageohio.org. Uh, email me, 
and I'll be happy to send you that uh, survey of the fundraisers.